What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna to be breaking down Kyle Pitts' route running. We're gonna be talking about some of the great things that he's able to do to get some separation and some of the mistakes that he makes that are easy mistakes to make on certain routes, okay? So I hope this gives you guys some value and gives you some insight on how you bigger guys can maybe get some separation and just how anybody can run routes and run good routes. But also, fellas, if you guys wanna improve your route running in 10 days, you want a specific 10 day step-by-step -step process as to how to improve your route running, check out that very first link in the description, a specific drill program, specific drill technical points and all the above to help your guys routes improve and we break down full routes step by step so let's get started so we're looking at this kind of diamond release right here on the goal line from Pitts. now what does he decide to do he gives this little hesitation skip and then he bursts up one two three and what we call that where you take off on three steps on a 45 degree angle is called the diamond release okay so with a diamond release you're trying to sell an outside release obviously and then we're trying to sell vertical we're trying to sell fade and try to get this db to turn his hips now Pitts, obviously a very big dude obviously a very athletic guy so off the line of scrimmage he's already a vertical threat right this is something that you see like a great comparison i think on this one is um like calvin johnson you look at old film of calvin johnson and you see the way he runs routes on the goal line everything's a fade everything he's making everything look like he's going to the back corner of the end zone and rightfully so right off the line of scrimmage as a db you're already thinking man this guy's a lot bigger than me i don't want to get beat to the back corner so we got to use that to my advantage as a bigger guy you're already a vertical threat off the line so let's just sell vertical with my route so he gives this little hesitation and then what does he do? One, two, and then breaks on the third. You see how his shoulders and hips are already going to the outside. His eyes are to the outside. Those are the things that self fade. You got speed, body language, and then eyes. Those are the three things that can get a DB to move off this platform and get him to go outside. And then we open up this lane for me to break back underneath, right? Now, you see how this break right here, everybody loves to talk about his cuts, right? So it's like a one, two, three. And you see how we call that a sudden cut. That's explosion, right? When you break suddenly like that, that's how you create explosion and you use that explosion to shoot up into a route. The only reason that cut is sudden is because he's actually running. One of the mistake a lot of receivers make on this kind of a break when they give this little hesitation and then they burst up for three steps is they'll take choppy steps. They'll take choppy steps and then they start to lean back and they kind of reach for the cut. And then that cut's not that explosive and that gives that DB time to react. But you see how he's able to burst up fast, pop this foot in the ground right now, and that creates that explosion to where he could just shoot off. You see how much he pushes. He pushes off that leg, opens up that hips. And now when we're in this position where we get this DB outside his frame, he could still recover if he's got good recovery speed. So I got to make sure that I pump those arms and I got to make sure that I really drive and really run to widen the gap with this DB. If I can widen the gap with him and continue to win that race to the ball, I will always keep that separation. A lot of people can get open. Not a lot of people can stay open. So let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time from Pitts. This is a very, very good route. Hesitation, skip, one, two, three. Make it look like a fade. Make it look like a race to the back corner. Then go make this catch over the middle, all right? So now we're going to be looking at this kind of out and up route from him, kind of like a wheel almost, you could say. Um, we're going to be talking about one of the things that I feel he could do a little bit better on this route, okay? So let's watch thing full speed. So you see when he breaks to the out, he kind of gives a little glance with his, with his eyes. He's a little bit open, right? Great job going up and making this catch. And we're also going to talk about how to win this 50-50 catch here in a second. But what, what could get him some more separation on this is, is I think that he needs to sell a little bit more with his eyes, right? Good job pushing vertical. Good job making this break. And he gives a little bit of a glance, right? Now, this is like the, the part that we talk about. If you're familiar with this channel and you've watched a lot of these videos, especially on double moves we talk about a couple different things we talk about kind of the same thing as that three-step diamond release you want to have speed you want to be able to commit your shoulders and your hips because that's where that db should be looking but also you want to give your eyes back to the quarterback okay so you see how Pitts, he's got two out of the three he breaks right here one two three in stride shoulders are committed on the out he's going to break this thing off but where are his eyes his eyes are always going vertical if i'm a db i'm not jumping on that thing even if my eyes get in the backfield and that quarterback pump fakes me and i still feel that he's looking down i know he's not getting the ball right so it's very important that as a receiver you want to snap your eyes on any kind of double move any kind of out and up because that will get you more separation especially when you do such a good job because you see what a lot of guys will make the mistake that they'll make much like that diamond release that we were talking about they'll break right here they'll take three choppy steps to so go one two three and then they try to break back up vertical and they didn't sell anything a db what a db's taught on a double move right what they're taught make sure that they don't jump on a double move is that they feel your speed right so if they feel you break this thing off and there's a change in speed and you kind of slow down dude i'm sitting right over the top on that thing i know you're not going to be catching that ball and if they do throw it to you i'm going to come blow you up because you're not actually running right so we got to make sure that there's no change of speed as a receiver and i think pitts does a good job of that when he breaks off here there's no change one two three he's very sudden with that third break he's bursting up vertical however he didn't sell the route good enough okay so you got to make sure that you guys snap your eyes commit your hips and your shoulders to the break and have speed to the break because those are the three things that make every single db believe
believe that you're catching an out route, right? It's all about deception. It's all about setting this thing up. So how can you make your routes look the same? How can you make everything else look the exact same? That's what we want to be focused on, okay? So now let's, let's talk about top of the catch here, right? Because again, your receiver, maybe you don't run as good of a route. You're kind of covered. This guy's making a good play on you. What do you got to do to go up and win those 50-50 balls? So especially being a bigger guy, you're going to be throwing a lot of these. But I think the main key is when you're at this point, you want to go up strong. You don't want to go off kind of soft and, you know, kind of go up there to where if this DB were to hit your arms, the ball would fall out every single time. You want to go up strong. Obviously, have soft hands. Your eyes are very important. You want to take that picture of the catch. Now, this is something that you can't really think about when you're in the middle of a game, right? This is too much to think about. You're going to be confusing yourself and you're not going to be playing fast if you think about all this, right? Because at the end of the day, the goal is to play fast. But this is something that you work on when you're rowing routes first air, when you're going one-on-ones, when you could focus on these types of things and it doesn't matter. It's not a high pressure situation. That's when you build these good habits. So when you show up in the game, it's second nature and it's natural. Okay. So making sure that we go up strong is very important. Now, when you secure this ball, it's very important that you use your almost body as a shield. You want to rip away from this DB. Okay. So you see how when he secures this catch, he rips it away, right? He rips this thing away. Yes, obviously he's falling, but when you can rip this thing away and use your body as a shield, that DB has no chance to make a PBU. So even when you're in the back corner of the end zone and you have like a straight up jump ball and the DB's here, you want to catch it and then turn away or pull it back behind your head. So anytime it's that 50-50 opportunity, want to make sure that we go up, secure the catch, use your body as a shield to make sure we protect this ball. Let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Pitts. Having speed into the break, could do a better job of giving those eyes and selling the route so he could get more open, but great job finishing the play. Obviously, that's why so many people are so high on this guy. Very excited to see where he goes. One of my favorite players in the draft this year. So now we look at this next clip. You see how he kind of stems this guy to the outside. He's running a post route. Now, we're going to be talking about just kind of what this does, what this stem does, right? So you see how he kind of gives him this outside stem, breaking to the outside. Wouldn't consider this necessarily like a corner post because there's not really a hard cut, hard three steps. It's kind of just like a wider stem post, right? So now you see where's this DB looking? DB should be looking at his hips, right? So you guys got to make sure, again, it's all about deception. It all comes down to the same things that we were talking about. When we stem him to the outside, I want to bring my whole body. I don't want to be just kind of running to the outside and have my upper half drifting to the inside. I want to force this DB to turn his hips. So when I decide to make this break right here, I bam, I get his hips to turn. Maybe I force him to speed turn. Maybe he has a slow open up with his hips. He decides to open up, but you guys know that if I get forced this DB to have to open up like this, and I'm able to make this sudden cut right here, see how his upper half is moving with this cut, I should be able to explode off this break and get some separation because him opening up is slow. If he speed turns, he might be in a situation where he can make a play on this and drive on the ball. But if I get him to open up slow like this, right, I should catch this ball every single time. And you see how when Pitts drives off of this cut right here, he's opening up that hip. It's almost like he's doing like, like opening up a car door. That's how you want to think of that inside hip after you make that cut. He makes that cut, opens up that hip, continues to fight those hands. He's not afraid to play through contact, especially you bigger guys. Cannot be afraid of contact. You've got to always be constantly fighting the hands. Pretend like the DB's got crap underneath his fingernails and you're constantly trying not to let him touch you, right? So I fight those hands constantly. I'm able to get some separation for a big guy. This is a ton of separation. And you see, when does he shoot up his hands? That's what I want to talk about one more time. Especially when we're in traffic, especially when I got a guy on my hip, or especially when I got a guy running from across the field. I'm sitting in a window. My hands want to be late. Your hands want to be late over the middle so the DB doesn't have time. You see how he doesn't show those hands super early. That ball's about right here. That's when he shows those hands. He's not showing those hands like when the ball's over here because then that DB knows exactly where that ball's going to go and he can make a play on those hands. So you want to be late. Don't give that DB any time to react. So I catch this thing, secure it, and put it away, and then burst back up field. That's a great job by Pitts. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. Great job taking this wide angle post breaking this thing off, snagging that thing with late hands, and then pulling this back to his frame. Very, very excited about this guy. Great job using that wide stem post. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, just, you know, if you guys have any questions, reaching out to me. I'll get back to you as soon as possible, like I said. And then also, fellas, if you guys want to improve your route running in 10 days, you want a specific 10-day step-by-step process, check out that very first link in the description. Hope we get you guys on that soon. Again, if you just want more info on it, check it out below. 45 minutes minutes long and I'll see you guys next time.